So I've had a really good response with the Land Cruiser videos. There is one more subject we haven't really touched on and, and that is what I would change. If I was to modify it again and start from scratch and I more or less had an open checkbook, what things would I go further with? Um, there are a couple that have always been in the back of my mind um, if I was to go a bit further and a bit more extreme. Uh, the, the first one that really comes to mind is the rear track correction thing really errs me. And yes, that is a part of the car, but going down the modifying side, I think I think if I had my time over and money was not an object, I would probably put a rear diff housing in it. Um, I know I said the, the, the Black Sun Rages are there for a reason for, for offsets, or it's easier with offsets. Um, I, I really chose those because of the offset problem that 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 really just I had to get those wheels in my head I know I know that's not you know 100% true but in my head that's what I needed to get so if I had if I had been able to correct the rear track it would have opened up so many different wheel and tire options um, especially with the caravan the wife wanted some nice nice alloys on the caravan and you know uh, I fought long and hard for the sunnies um, just because I knew the the offset uh, problem so yeah it, the, the, the rear track thing really it does earn me um, and if I have my time again I would pay for a, a, a rear housing. Now the other benefit to that is then you could possibly go to a higher GVM. Um, that's probably uh, going along with that. The next thing I would do is this has a Lovells um, GVM GCM kit in it and it is it does the job. Um, it's, it's quite cost effective but if I had an open checkbook I would probably go crazy with the suspension, not in height, but just some really nice gear, nice nice shocks. Um, try to make it ride a bit nicer, but also carry the weight. And I mean, that is that is very hard to do. Um, but then that also, having that rear diff housing in there, the wider track, but then that rear diff housing is also a higher axle load rating. So although this is a 3900 GVM kit, I'll be interested to know what my rear axle load is once I'm fully loaded. Um, that's being brutally honest. A lot of people don't want to talk about that. They can be under GVM, under GCM, but their rear axle load it could be through the roof. Um, all, all your weight that you add to a vehicle pretty well goes on the rear axle, especially then if you're putting 350 kilos of all weight on it. So open checkbook, rear diff housing would be one for sure. Open, it, it fixes those, those few problems that all go together. Um, the next thing I would probably do would be the 300mm chassis extension. So at the time buying the vehicle, I'm like, I couldn't, I couldn't fathom someone then hacking, hacking it in half and adding 300mm into the chassis in it. I mean, most people still think that's crazy and rightly so. Um, but this isn't a Land Cruiser problem. This is a dual cab problem. The dual cab U's are just like it's a crazy design where they have the wheel jammed against the back of the cab you have this massive overhang with a tow ball that overhangs even further and then you put 300 plus kilos of ball weight on it and then somehow reverse engineer it to get it to drive straight down the road with suspension mods and all the rest of it um, the manufacturers advertise all these things to tow three and a half ton with but the the fundamental design of it is flawed from the get-go so if it, if it was an open checkbook thing again, um, that would be the second thing I would do is do a 300 mil chassis extension that would then make the turning circle even worse, but it would definitely tow nicer and handle the weight load better. Um, going with the 300 mil extension, you'd probably end up just going all out with the 4495 GVM. Then I could put a boat on top, um, cause I'm, I'm pretty well maxed out. And like, you've just seen the, you've just seen the vehicle it's not extreme, hasn't got a big canopy on it, um, but I know with five, four people in it, me and, me and the missus and the two kids, 350 kilos of ball weight, um, we have 40 kilos left in our 3900 GVM. That is with full full fuel, so 240 litres of diesel. Um, I think at the time we had a kayak on the roof, a couple of kids' kayaks in the back, and possibly a golden retriever. So, I mean, we were reasonably loaded, but looking around looking at what's driving around the streets and driving down the highway it it doesn't look overloaded like it's it's not that extreme so um yes definitely axle housing 300 mil chassis extension 
then you'd end up with the 4495 while you're there you might as well put any wheels and tires you want on it um, so yeah open checkbook they're the first things I would do right so the next thing I'll probably change um, if, if I was able to spend whatever I wanted would be the toolbox setup I've got on the back I, I really like it um, you're able to put a motorbike up in between put the put the dog up in between in the middle uh, chuck some firewood like it's very practical for us because we tow something so we don't need a full canopy however the toolboxes I put on it they're good but I'll let you know after five months of um, traveling around um, at the end of the year and doing some harder roads and some corrugations I just feel like I may have probably underdone it there um, I probably should have spent a little bit more money and 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 got some nicer ones made up um, not not bagging out the, the products I have um, everything's made to a price point to some degree uh, the Triple M tray or Toyota tray that's on it I don't have a problem with them at all for the money um, yeah you, you can't beat the value for money plus they're just a, uh, quite a strong tray I've had them all my life I reckon that'll be at least my fourth one on different utes um, being a tradesman and they, they hold up really well uh, powder coated black dresses it up nice um, you know, I did I did price up some of the, you know, I, I can't even remember which brand, Norworld Mitts, um, there's quite a few of them now, G-Works is a really good one, and their products are beautiful, like there's no no doubt about it, they're, they're definitely, um, oh, I, you know, it, it looks fantastic, uh, probably is a lot stronger, but for, for my needs and, and to be able to spend the money elsewhere, the Triple M or Toyota Tray, they're really not a bad thing, bad thing in my eyes. Probably should have spent a bit more money on the toolboxes and got them custom made, um, as in being a little bit stronger and probably would have made them a little bit taller so, to suit the size of the vehicle properly. So that's probably the third thing I'll do. Um, yeah, open checkbook. Fourth thing, probably not so much a money thing, but I'm sure it, it would become a money thing. Um, it, the thing has plenty of grunt to tow with now it's been tuned. I've spoken about that. But just I've sort of always liked the idea of tinkering with cars and i've never really had had the opportunity to do it um always stuck with four drive and just made them practical to touring i've never really gone down that path of really mucking around with something so if if money was no option and this was just sitting around as a toy wasn't a tourer i'd probably go nuts under the bonnet i would probably do um, custom turbos and intercoolers and and just yeah they really make it fun um I think they're they're a good motor, um, and they're they're really well under stress. Like they're the same motor as what's in a two hundred series, and they come out with basically half the power. So there's no no dramas there if you look after them. I think um, pushing pushing them fairly hard uh, wouldn't be wouldn't be too big an issue, and a lot of people are doing it with great success. So yeah, fourth thing, uh, money no issue, and just. Uh, making the car completely impractical chase chase a heap of power out of it would be a lot of fun the fifth thing if it was anywhere near cheap enough in my eyes and i mean some people will think it's cheap enough and um well, i mean some people do it and and good on them like oh, everyone's different would be an auto conversion um i do actually enjoy the manual but for touring and towing that would be one of the most practical mods you could do is an automatic um Towing heavy loads and trying to get it off the line on a hill, it's great that you have low range, but eventually you've got to stop somewhere to put it back into high range. So the automatic would be fantastic um, as a tourer. So as a, as a toy, the manual is heaps of fun. As a tourer, the auto would be awesome, but don't quote me on prices, but, you know, like at 30 to 40 grand, I don't know. It's a lot of money. Um Money no option, and as a really practical mod, the automatic would be, yeah, yeah, awesome, yeah, yeah. Okay, I gotta go, wait. So yeah, money no object, automatic conversion would be awesome and much more practical for what I use this vehicle for. Right, the final one. The final one's a big one. Um, the fifth thing I would change if I went to do this all again and modify a semi-series cruiser would be not to buy one. Um, I would buy a 200 series and get it chopped. Um, that is the honest truth. If money was no object and it was just a touring vehicle, a, a chopped 200 series would, would be for me 
Um, but you're talking at least double what this owes me. Um, so I can't say that in my circumstances that that 200 series chop is going to be doubly as good as what this is or um, allow me to do more things that this doesn't. So I do have a budget um, and, and that's why I bought this. A lot of people will go, well, these are too expensive, but just about any dual cab ute with this amount of gear on it now, I sort of bought this around the right time, I think. But yeah, like I've, I've seen a few of them at the moment, just a, you know, Wiluxes, D-Maxes, all, all, they're all the same, whatever. Um, they're, they're not really much cheaper anymore by the time you do them up. Like you, you end up doing the same modifications to all of them, no matter which one you start with. Um, but then to step into a 200 series and get it chopped, uh, especially with the way the prices have gone, <clears throat> you, you, it, it would owe me double. It really would. Um, so yeah, but money no object, and to be more practical for what I use it for, um, and definitely we could all agree more comfortable. Um, the final mod that I would change, I just, yeah, would buy a 200 series and chop it. Hi right, guys, um, we're sort of getting to the end of the 79 series of videos. Uh, there, there will be more. I've got a probably going to do one on towing um, and, and a real world experience of towing I've got coming up. I think that'll be worthwhile. Like how much we weigh, what the EGTs are in fourth and fifth. Um, you know what kind of grade we can sit on 100 k's an hour in. Because like I said, this is the reason I bought it, um, and it is a highlight of the vehicle for me. So we'll touch on that, but comment below what you think about those modifications I've mentioned, um, you know, cost versus, you know, pros and cons. And like, does it get to the point where you're modifying this that much that you probably should have bought something to begin with? I mean, everyone has an opinion on that. Um, like I said, for me, this is still the perfect balance between cost, practicality, unpracticality. Um, so, and everyone has to weigh that up. Um, I really don't think the cost is as crazy as what everyone, like what they used to be. They're not that much dearer than the other utes anymore like they used to be. So that doesn't come into it as much anymore. Make sure you like, subscribe. I'll put a couple of links in here now for the previous two apps I've done on the, the Cruiser. Uh, we got a lot of response from it. Just, I'm trying to be brutally honest. Um, a lot of people have come, it's come across as, oh, I don't even like the thing. I do, I really do. Um, but to me, it is still just an object. It's still just a car. Um, everything's got its ups and downs. So that's we'll, we'll, we'll keep trying to do that with everything we do in these videos. Give you a real, real honest, real world experience of touring, camping, four wheel driving, and everything around that, including products. So thanks for watching, guys. And don't forget, you only live once, so get out there and enjoy it.